Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Puya Banibayat from Midas. And welcoming you to our e-learning session. Uh, if you remember, in the first session of the this series, e-learning uh, courses series, we had Dr. Gerger Wollman uh, talking about the network tied arch bridges. And uh, today, this is a follow-up session on his presentation. And uh, what he explained there, uh, I'm going to uh, have more uh, in-depth uh, discussion here by sharing the uh, case study that he has done and uh, talking about the steps of the design and construction of those type of bridges and whatever consideration uh, requires uh, for an engineer to consider. So uh, if you don't mind, I just quickly go through the e-learning courses and just as a reminder, refreshing your mind, and then we start the presentation. Um, the e-learning courses is con uh, is a uh, conduct of three. Po the e-learning courses is composed of uh, three sessions: technical seminar, case studies and discussion, and numerical modeling and analysis training. Uh, in the first session uh, of technical seminar, we have uh, uh, professional engineering. Uh, coming uh, professional engineers coming and talking about the certain project that they have done and uh, sharing uh, the challenges that they faced with other engineers. Then they, uh, you see a list of uh, attend uh, presenters that we had, and then, as we discussed last week, Mr. Um, Gregor Wallman presented his presentation. The uh, second part of this series will be in-depth case study and discussion. And this is the session that uh, you are attending. Uh, in this session, as I said, uh, we're going to uh, cover the technical seminar topic that, um, as uh, you know, the last sessions was uh, for the network tied arch bridges. And today we're going to uh, have more, you know, share more detail about those type of bridges. These are the examples of the uh, different type of bridge, which uh, we will be having those uh, in the upcoming sessions. And then finally, we're going to have the numerical modeling and analysis training. So in this uh, session, which is the last session of this, each series, uh, the attendees will learn how to use the computer, uh, uh, computer programs to uh, model those type of bridges and how to perform different type of analysis to extract the, um, you know, desired results for purpose of the designing that type of bridges. Okay, so um, today uh, we are talking about the, uh, in, uh, the session is about the in-depth case study and discussion, as you see, and then the next week uh, we're going to have numerical modeling, and the uh, people who attended the, uh, will be attending the next, next session will provide them a free um, trial license, then they can uh, practice while they are attended in the session because it's going to be step-by-step -step modeling, uh, you know, performing the analysis, extracting the result, and then any uh, functions that require for this type of bridges will be shared. Okay, so uh, let's start the session. Um, as you can see from the title, it's an uh, in-depth case study and discussion of network tight arch bridges. So uh, I divided the session into three parts. The part one, we're going to have a case study of the Happy Hollow Park network tight arch bridge, which was a pedestrian bridge, uh, providing a general information, geometry, dimension, and all. In the second part, we have the, ad uh, I mean, we're sharing the advantages of network tight arch bridges compared to the uh, conventional uh, tight arches. And uh, in the last part, we're going to show you the design, uh, design of the network tight arch bridges, step-by-step -step designs, and uh, erection or construction methods, and the considerations of these two, which uh, an engineer should uh, take care of uh, during the design. And finally, showing the uh, finite element solution for design and construction of network tight arches. So part one uh, is the case study, and I'm going to share some general information. 
Uh, I collected general information about this bridge from uh, Gregor's um, paper, which was published in the Proceeding of International Bridge Conference, IBC 2012. Uh, so the Happy Hollow Park and Zoo uh, opened in 1961, and uh, this project was a part of a renovation for the um, uh, site of, uh, in the city of San Jose uh, in California, and they wanted to have a uh, signature bridge for their park, their uh, national park, and uh, initially uh, it seems that there was a uh, cable state uh, proposed to be built in this area, but uh, because the budget went um, beyond their, uh, you know, the construction cost went beyond their budget, so they denied that, and uh, after that the tight art network, tight arch bridge uh, type of uh, bridge was proposed by HNTB and uh, it's been accepted because the uh, you know the cost of uh, total cost of the bridge I mean the design and construction uh, was uh, you know satisfying the owners uh, requirement so uh, at the end uh, they come up with two tight network tight arch bridges as you can see in this picture uh, the lengths I mean the spans are 270 each and totally it comes up with uh, 540. This is a uh, plan view of uh, the bridge and uh, you see the configurations. So uh, the bridge is made of a, I mean the arch itself is a, a circular arch with a radius of 225 feet and the uh, basket handle configuration arrangement is selected and uh, as you can see, the um, springs line, distances between springs line uh, are 13 feet, each these two. And uh, um, totally 88 uh, inclined hangers is used. And uh, as you can see, the angles from 57 degrees to 71 degrees is uh, increasing gradually in both sides. And um, as you see, the, the design load uh, was a pedestrian traffic plus a, a five-ton uh, maintenance vehicle. As we discussed, these bridges are um, pedestrian bridges, so this is the load that we're going to apply on them. So erection of uh, east span over the uh, Coyote Creek uh, pedestrian. Uh, presented a particular uh, challenges. So uh, technically, the uh, that zoo didn't let the uh, constructor to use a uh, false works. Therefore, the uh, over the constructor has to use a um, cable cable state um, false work to uh, complete the analysis. So you can see just a um, briefly see the erection uh, sequences, but we're going to talk more about this in detail, that uh, why this type of uh, uh, false work is, is used and what's the advantage of it, and then what we have to consider in this case. And uh, the red dots that you see on each uh, hanger or the, uh, you know, temporary cables, are the forces uh, or stressing forces that are applied on the uh, cables to keep them in place and you know help us for um, during the construction. So you see uh, some uh, diagrams of the I mean displacement diagrams of the uh, uh, bridge during the construction. So uh, later on I will explain that. Uh, during the construction, uh, what well, how was the behavior of the structure? I mean, was it nonlinear, and what we have to consider there? And as you can see, uh, well, during the construction, each time we are just uh, applying the different stresses on different hangers, and uh, uh, definitely by applying the uh, stresses, we have different deformation of the bridge, and then finally the bridge comes up with the uh, you know final. Uh, geometry and final uh, shape that it has to have. So, the, this is a video I prepared so you can see how the uh, uh, construction is done. As you can see, as I said, this is like a red dot showing the 
uh, stresses that we have to we applied on different hangers or the um, uh, the cables that we use the temporary cables. All right. So um, after the uh, stru constru uh, structure is uh, completed and the hangers are placed, now the hangers are uh, pre I mean stressed, and then is the time to uh, remove the uh, temporary supports. Okay, so you're gonna see the yeah, removal of the temporary supports, and then it's gonna be the uh, bridge itself. And after that, uh, when we uh, removed all those uh, temporary supports, now is the time to um, adjust the uh, table, uh, the hangers, and then we're gonna. Uh, I will let you know that uh, what functions is used to come up with the uh, those forces, force arrangement, and then you know cable tuning. All right, so I just skipped at this, just uh, showing how um, this cable tuning happened to come up with the final uh, stage of the structure. Okay, so let's move to part two. Part two is the uh, part that we're going to talk about the advantages of network tied arches, and then having a uh, general, uh, you know, comparison between network tied arches and uh, uh, conventional um, tied arches. Okay, so um, uh, in these um, diagrams, you see uh, a tight arch bridge with the vertical hangers, as you see in the top, and in the bottom, you see the network tight arches. Uh, based on the definition, uh, Mr. Pert uh, Tevet, uh, which is the father of uh, network tight arch bridges, defines that uh, network tight arch bridges are a type of bridge which uh, the hangers are intersecting with at least two other hangers. So uh, this intersection may be more is uh, completely based on the configuration and then the dimension of the uh, bridge. Uh, by the way, uh, I have to mention that I got uh, uh, a lot of information from the you know uh, from the technical papers and uh, other uh, um, sources available on the website uh, www.network-arch.com as you see written here. Uh, this site is uh, for uh, Mr. Pert uh, Tevet, and it has information about almost all uh, network tight arch bridges all over the world. And uh, if you are interested, you can go there and uh, get uh, very uh, useful information about this type of bridges. So we're gonna I'm gonna use uh, some of those I summarize some of those information in this presentation. I'm gonna share it with you. Okay, so. Uh, Talking about the advantages of network tied arches, let's see uh, what's the characteristic of these uh, types of bridges. So network tied arches are recommended for spans between 250 and, hundred, uh, and 1,000 feet. So uh, it would be very valuable and uh, economical to get the uh, experience with network arches with spans between 400 and 600 feet. So the 400 and 600 feet is like uh, the best uh, size uh, for the spans that this type of bridge could be very beneficial and economical. The inclined hangar with multiple, uh, you know, intersection in tight arches can uh, distribute forces in such a way that bending moment and the shear forces are distributed to the upper cord, which is arch, and then the lower cord, which is tie, uh, just like a uh, truss. So uh, comparing these two. So you see this uh, network tight arch is has more is like more similar to the uh, um, uh, truss element truss structures although they are uh, these are just uh, hangers and then tensile elements uh, and, uh, the behavior from this and uh, the behavior are different from the uh, truss element but the, it uh, looks more similar to uh, those type of bridges and uh, this uh, configuration gives actually uh, a higher stiffness to the structure increases the redundancy and therefore uh, it uh, improves the behavior of this type compared to the uh, conventional type. Uh, so um, we discussed that uh, this inclined hanger makes a better distribution of the moment and shear and then the, uh, uh, this structure is like a stiffer structure and because of the you know uh, more redundancy that they have 
And uh, also, if these um, bridges um, are designed correctly or, you know, uh, in the best way, they can also uh, save up to 75 per, uh, 45% of total cost compared to conventional type arches, which is a pretty huge saving. So let's uh, uh, zoom in here and then uh, talk more about the stiffness and then the, uh, the characteristic of that um, network tight arches. All right, uh, I got these uh, uh, slides, uh, these uh, two shapes from the um, presentation of uh, Dr. Wellman uh, because he already uh, presented this to you and I would just uh, want to have a flashback to uh, what he mentioned. So uh, let me just compare these two. Uh, we have uh, two diagrams showing the maximum def uh, deflections of these two type of bridges under the same uh, loading. So, um, as you may know, uh, uh, the arch bridges um, behave pretty well when the entire spam is loaded or you have like a, um, you know, continuous distributed load uh, all over the spam because, uh, you know, the hangers are working pretty well and then the forces go to the uh, you know uh, arches and then the ribs and then they go to the support and everything is fine but they have a um, problem when uh, they are loaded uh, partially so partially I mean then uh, for example in this uh, diagram this only half of the uh, span is loaded so it causes like a more uh, deformation so comparing to the uh, comparing these two they are under the same load, uh, but you see that the maximum dis uh, uh, displacement uh, under the conventional type of uh, tight arches is 36 inch, uh, while the network tight arch with the same uh, design and same span and same load it comes to 3.3, which is almost uh, you know 10% um, of the other one, which is uh, pretty well. And uh, Comparing to the uh, conventional tight arches, the network tight arches, uh, uh, you know, the cores are only subject to the smaller bending. So um, I got these slides also from uh, Gregor's uh, presentation, just uh, in case to having a, uh, you know, refreshing your mind. So uh, here what I have, I have two diagrams for the uh, tight arches with the vertical hangers and two with, for the network tight arches. So comparing these two, when we have the uh, that partial forcing or loading, uh, imagine that the, just a half of the uh, structure is loaded. Now you see the distribution of the uh, moment in the tight and also in the arch. So you see how high is the uh, uh, you know bending moment compared to the corresponding one, uh, corresponding network tight arches. And uh, if to, if compare uh, the the lower diagram showing that if we have some losses in the tight, so imagine some part of the tie is not working properly, and we are uh, kind of like losing that part of the structure. So what happens is that uh, the load is here, and then the definitely the load should be distributed or distributed to the other part of the uh, structure, and um, the same with the moment. So you see, uh, if you are losing this part of the arch, uh, of the tie, the bending moment on the arch is increasing uh, um, suddenly, and you see it's almost twice. And uh, definitely the bending moment in the um, um, tie is decreasing. While uh, comparing the this type to the network tight arch, you see that uh, when we are losing some element in the tide, uh, what happens is that definitely the moment here de uh, decreases, but uh, the amount of moment in the arch is not increasing uh, that much, uh, which shows that the structure behaves pretty well, and then even if something unexpected happens to the structure or we are losing any structural element, uh, structure itself is smart enough to redistribute the uh, moment uh, pretty smoothly and then behave pretty well. So you see that uh, in this case also network tight arches are uh, behaving uh, way better than the uh, conventional type of bridges. 
Uh, more on uh, advantages of tight arches. Uh, they are uh, not sensitive to uneven settlement uh, in the foundations, again, because of their um, stiffness and then the uh, more redundancy. And also the higher strength and the low weight give the network tide arches a good resistance for the earthquake. So they p behave pretty well um, for the, you know, under the seismic forces. Okay. Um, now we uh, had an introduction about the project, shared the case study. We talked about the advantages of this type of uh, bridge network tide arches and then why one, um, I mean, engineer should select such a uh, such type of bridge. And uh, now in the third part, I'm going to share some idea about the design of network tide arches, uh, erection or construction of uh, construction methods and then the consideration design and erection consideration that uh, you have to take care of and uh, finally uh, showing you some final element solution for design and construction so uh, what I do I just uh, combine the construct design and erection uh, together and then show you uh, in which stage you need to do what type of um, analysis what type of result do you need for the design of that part of uh, I mean that uh, stage of the construction. Okay, so um, for the design of network tight arches, uh, I divide them into two general stages. One is construction stage and one is final stage. So the construction stage and final, the uh, structure behaves completely differently and then uh, we have to consider different factors. So in general, all structural component must be designed. Like, uh, uh, you know, arrangement of the hangers, we have to find the, find the optimal arrangement. Arches, uh, we have to, you know, design them for, for example, buckling. Hangers, we have to check them for, you know, um, tensile loads and all. Then we have the lower cord or the uh, tide, which uh, we have to check them for the post tensioning or pre-stressing. Uh, you know, using those uh, panels or uh, the uh, uh, trusses that we are using. So uh, differences between the construction stage and final uh, stage. Let's just uh, I listed some of those here. So let's just discuss about them. During the construction stages. Um, actually, the structure is uh, not stable enough to, you know, uh, self-support itself uh, because this, the elements that we use are pretty slender and there is no support. So, network tight arches, uh, I mean, general are tight, uh, tight arch bridges or ne uh, network tight arches are kind of uh, suspension bridges because uh, what we have is uh, only two supports, if I show you. We have two supports, and then in between we don't we don't have any uh, pier. So uh, entirely the force should uh, go transfer to the, the these ribs, and then from the arch goes to the supports, and then uh, transfers to the ground. Okay. So uh, because uh, during the construction we have only those two supports, therefore there is not uh, enough stability uh, for the structure to take care of itself. So uh, we have to uh, be worried about that part. Then there is a well, we see nonlinear behavior of cables during construction stages because uh, you know when you have those hangers, the hangers are not uh, completely uh, tight because uh, the weight of these uh, tie is not that much, and then also you have temporary supports. So some uh, weight of the I mean self weight of those tie uh, goes to the support. So uh, you know the cables or the hangers are not really working well um, you know, during the construction. Therefore, we are seeing that nonlinear behavior. And by nonlinear behavior, I mean we are seeing that, uh, you know, there's, there's some sags in those um, cables. Then uh, we see the wind effect during the construction. As I said, because during construction structure is not stable enough, we have to consider the, uh, you know, such other um, loads like a wind on the structure. Then uh, the temporary supports are important, um, so I'm going to explain this more because this case was a uh, special case. We used the, um, you know, 
they use the um, cable stays for uh, these supports and then we have to know the pre-stressing forces in those ca uh, cables uh, for different part of the construction. Then we have the final stage. In the final stage, uh, actually structure is behaving completely different from the construction stages. So, uh, what happens after the R-sharp place, now uh, we have to calculate the, uh, you know, uh, forces inside the cables, I mean the um, stressing forces inside the cables. Uh, if you remember on that uh, video that I showed you, after the uh, temporary supports are removed, now we have to do the cable tuning to come up with the final geometry and all. So, uh, another thing that we are seeing in the final stage is the linear behavior of elements. So, uh, the concrete, if we, if you use the concrete for a slab, now the concrete is set and then it's behaving uh, linearly. If the, uh, I mean, we use the uh, cables as a, for the hangers and now uh, they are, you know, pretty tight and they are working completely and they are straight and then they are also uh, linear. So, uh, the behavior is changing, although it becomes linear and it's easier to do the analysis, but we have to consider uh, other effects as well. Uh, then we have to consider the critical live load on the structure. So, in this case, the case that I showed you uh, for the Happy Hollow Park Zoo, Park and Zoo, uh, this is a pedestrian bridge, so definitely we don't have a, uh, you know, um, moving load on that. Uh, it's just the pedestrian uh, um, pedestrian force and also the uh, five tons uh, maintenance vehicle. That's all. But if you have a highway bridge, uh, definitely we have to consider the uh, truck loads and all. So um, we have to find out the uh, part, uh, you know, partially loaded or the critical load of that um, bridge, which causes the maximum effect. I mean, displacement or whatever. Also in the final stage, one important thing is we have to consider the extraordinary loads. So by extraordinary loads, I mean uh, something like accidental hanger loss. Uh, entirely, let me show you this. Entire this structure is uh, uh, highly, um, you know, based on these uh, hangers. So if you are losing the hangers, there is no stiffness in the structure, and the structure will collapse instantly. So this is very important to check what happens if one or, you know, one or two hangers are losing or, you know, something happens and, uh, you know, they are gone. And then we have to see how the structure behaves and uh, what will the maximum displacement, distribution, and then the safety of the uh, structure itself. Okay? So, um, beside the design, now uh, let's talk about some, um, you know, uh, erection of network tight arches. Uh, in general, I can say there are two type of, two general type of uh, erections. One is uh, fabrication, the uh, fabrication onshore, and then, you know, bringing the structure uh, in place and then uh, jack them or, you know, pull them and place them in the right location. Another one is uh, using the uh, false works. So uh, using the false work, there are different methods. One is just using a regular fixed false works. Another one is a cable stays. So this is the first method that the uh, bridge itself is constructed on, uh, on shore, which is way easier. And uh, you know, um, you, le you need less equipment to uh, build the structure, and then they're going to bring it in a location and then using it jacks or just pulling it up and then place it in a location, put them on the supports, fix them and it's, uh, the bridge is ready to, uh, you know, be open to the traffic. As you see here. And then because one advantage of these structures is that network tight uh, uh, compared to the, uh, the span length is very, very um, uh, light and then it's very easy to, you know, um, pull them up or just use the jacks to um, place them. This is another method, this uh, the 
slides showing you how that um, you now using the false work happens. So if this is the um, free span that we have to put the bridge, so you can use the temporary supports and uh, you now build the arch and uh, you now by placing them and so arch and then the uh, ties are uh, created, constructed and then we applying these uh, hangers and then fix the hangers and then placing the uh, here they used some uh, pre-stress, uh, sorry, yeah, pre-stress panels and then, you know, it's ready to um, carry the load. This is uh, another example. So this one we had a fixed uh, false works. Here we use the, you see that um, they are using a cable stays. So um, this actually is different from what they used in the um, the uh, HNTV used, but um, they, they are pretty similar in terms of like a functionality. So here you see that uh, all the uh, there's just two main towers, and then the hangers are holding these uh, uh, different part of the arch. And when they are meeting each other, so that we can just uh, release those hangers. But uh, this is what happens in the Happy Hollow Park network. Uh, a network tight arch so um, because the uh, you know the city of the San Jose didn't let them to use false works in this area so they had to use uh, these temporary uh, temporary uh, tower here and then using the cables to hold the entire structure so as they uh, you know, going further for uh, constructing, for erecting the uh, different part of arch and also the tie. So they are using these uh, frames, uh, which they are hold by this main frame here. And, uh, you know, they are placing the um, arches on top of each other. And then one is created, constructed, so they can uh, simply remove these and then install, I mean, install those uh, hangers and then remove all these. So you saw the uh, construction stage uh, in the video that I shared with you. Okay, so let's uh, I, I shared with you that uh, what type of uh, design we have to consider and then what uh, type of construction do we have. Now let's uh, combine those two and see uh, how we have to use some uh, finite element tools uh, to help us for design of this type of Bridges. So the first part, uh, I'm going to focus on the design for the construction stages. As we discussed, the stability is an issue because the elements are slender and uh, then we have to consider those. Uh, then another uh, thing is we have to provide uh, required stress in the cable during arches and, uh, you know, tie direction. For example, if you look at this, uh, if we, uh, you know, if we just uh, pre-stress this uh, cable right here, the last cable, uh, okay, this will, this remain, this support remain uh, horizontal, but uh, imagine if we apply this, added this uh, uh, rib here, and added more, uh, more of the tie here, so what happens, we're going to have some uh, downward deflection, and therefore the structure will not remain st uh, straight. Therefore we have to apply more pre-stressing force on the cable to bring it up and then the final stage uh, uh, it comes uh, completely horizontal. So uh, this actually called lack of force, um, lack of fit force, which uh, you need additional pre-stressing force inside the cable uh, to make sure that the final stage will become completely horizontal by applying these stresses. Okay, and then uh, this you see nonlinear behavior of the structure and also cables, which you can see here. When we have that additional uh, displacement, when we come up with a large displacement, uh, then we cannot consider them as a, um, you know, assume that they are linear. So it will become nonlinear geometry and uh, definitely you have to um, run a, um, if you're doing the analysis with any software, uh, definitely you have to run a nonlinear, geometry nonlinearity analysis. 
So the lack of fit force, um, this is also one function that might a civil provide you uh, and it could be very helpful uh, during the construction because um, as I said if you are not coming up for example you are constructing this from left this one from right and then you assume that these two should meet each other uh, in the same location so if the uh, you know uh, structure is not horizontal or they are going different directions that's uh, why uh, what happens to you know causes more money you have to spend to fix these and uh, you know other uh, stories so this lack of fit force uh, is a function is just help a lot uh, in case of like uh, you know finding the uh, required stresses during the construction stages another issue that we are seeing here is that uh, hangers itself uh, are not straight during the construction so the uh, construction stages will be we have the uh, ties which is a uh, lower cord and then we have the arch which is the upper cord and then we are just placing these hangers so during this uh, stage we are not seeing uh, uh, we are seeing the nonlinear behavior of um, hangers themselves so uh, we have to use a nonlinear element so um, one uh, element that Midas will provide to um, for these type of structures uh, is a cable. Cable is a nonlinear uh, element, uh, and then you know you can use it for the geometry nonlinearities. Completely give you those uh, you know sags and all those, which is pretty helpful and you know uh, makes it possible for the uh, engineer to have a real uh, you know understanding of the structure and then see how the structure gonna behave in the uh, you know during the construction another thing that you need to consider during the construction uh, stage is the uh, time dependent uh, material property so time dependent material I mean uh, uh, the creep and co creep and shrinkage and also compressive strength of concrete so we, we should uh, we can co consider these two you see one uh, uh, you know diagram here showing a creep coefficient of uh, concrete and uh, you see the kind of similar type of uh, curve for the compressive strength of concrete so it depends on um, you know the loads that you apply depends on the size of the element that you are um, um, you know using so uh, th this causes a different losses different you know forces on your structure and different deformation so definitely you have to you need to use uh, such a uh, behavior or I mean time dependent behavior and uh, Midas Civil also provides you this based on a code and also based on the on the user defined uh, functions uh, in the next session we're gonna have uh, you know in detail we're gonna show you how we, you can set these up and then how you can use them in the uh, real um, uh, design the another thing is uh, using a composite section because uh, you know um, for your deck you may need a, need to use a composite section and then composite section as you see as you know uh, it could be a steel uh, eye girder uh, with the you know concrete on top which they are working together and then considered as a composite. My the steel provides you such a um, section and then you can uh, for example tell the software that this concrete will be set after three days and after three days they behave uh, they work together as a composite section so these are uh, two functions that can help the uh, bridge engineer to um, you know design the network tight arches so let's uh, uh, finish this and uh, switch to the design for the final stage in the final stage as we discussed we are seeing completely different behavior of the structure we see the uh, uh, cables are behaving linearly material are set I mean concrete is set and then we are not seeing uh, that much of time dependent material behavior and uh, uh, other than that hanger force adjustment is required uh, because um, if you remember here we discussed that during the construction stage we need some additional forces on the cables for the cables of the temporary support to come up with the final geometry 
Now the structure is set is uh, completed. We apply these hangers. Now we have to uh, apply the pre-stressing on the structure on the, these cables to uh, form the final shape of the structure and it's ready for uh, you know uh, carrying the load on top of it. So for that one uh, we need to do the hanger force adjustment and that's an optimization problem uh, with a high number of you know parameters. Uh, for example in case of uh, Happy Hollow Park network tight arches uh, there were 88 hangers uh, which uh, causes um, into to, uh, you know it makes a very large uh, matrix of uh, uh, 264 um, by 264 matrix uh, for you know doing the optimization on that and then uh, coming up with the best um, forces in each hangers to come up with the final geometry which is uh, you know time taking and uh, I mean doing one single mistake so it causes every other uh, um, forces. And then uh, you need to consider the moving load analysis as we discussed we have to find the critical um, loads uh, to see what's uh, causing the maximum effect uh, on the structure it could be displacement or it could be forces or moments. Then also we need to consider the extraordinary loads. So uh, let's see how we can do those. So the first one will be hanger force adjustment. So the hanger force adjustment, as I said, structure is completed. Uh, those supports are removed. Now we have the hangers, which have some pre-stressing force or uh, stresses. Now we have to apply uh, some more forces to uh, generate the final geometry. So um, using this uh, hand calculation or using the spreadsheet uh, may be you know a very time uh, consuming and then very sensitive. While you can use Midas Civil, uh, Midas Civil provide you um, uh, those uh, matrices, which we call like uh, um, influence matrix, and then this function, which called unknown load factors, would provide you. Uh, those functions and just make it so easy for the uh, engineer to come up with the final uh, forces in one shot. Another thing is uh, cable tuning, uh, which this is another uh, function for the structure which uh, for example after this um, hanger force adjustment for example the software provides you that uh, the force in this element should be 205 uh, mm, keeps. So now you can apply 205 and want to see what happens if you apply 200 and then what's the effect on the other structure. So you can manually play with those uh, forces and then uh, put them, set them in the, uh, you know, in the range that you want and then ask the software that you don't want to, for example, bending moment of certain element on the tie or on the arch goes beyond a certain uh, value. So uh, the software will uh, provide you, I mean, adjust the forces based on what you exactly want. All right, how to find the critical forces? So it depends on the, uh, you know, um, width of that bridge. Um, it might become uh, more, um, you know, complex. But if you have one or two lanes, so it probably it's easy to do the hand calculation, but you have a wider bridge. Uh, and then you have a couple of uh, vehicle running at the same time so uh, you may not be able to find the uh, critical force for every uh, single uh, element of the arch and also for the tie. So uh, you need to use a um, software for finding those functions. So as you see in this diagram Midas Civil after you're running the moving load analysis for example, if you are interested to know what is the maximum bending moment happened in this girder, in this exterior girder, you can select this exterior girder and the software show you what load cases or what arrangement of the structure, uh, sorry, the moving load uh, causes the maximum bending moment in this element. As you see, this is a truck and then this is the uh, distributed load or lane load on the structure in a different location. So this, this makes it so easy for you to find uh, that critical load 
and also you can save those loads as a static load and if you want to do any changes to the you know uh, sectional property or uh, you know changing the uh, that cables or arches uh, that's that makes it so easy for the user to quickly check it because it will be a static load and then it's run in a couple of seconds and then finally uh, one of the extraordinary loads to be checked is a hanger loss if you remember uh, Dr. Wolman talking about the hanger loss and he showed you this diagram uh, in a way that uh, when we are losing one hangers, what happens is that we are losing one hanger, definitely, which will be a static load, and the load will be distributed and handled with the adjacent element. But uh, that's not the only effect. We have also uh, a dynamic effect on the structure because the hangers have pretty high uh, uh, stress in them, and then if you are losing the, um, we are losing one of those, we're going to have an uh, you know, extra forces in the uh, reverse direction as you see the flash is showing them here and then we have to consider that dynamic effect. So how to uh, consider that dynamic effect? You can also, you can simply apply a uh, static load and then apply some amplification factor uh, or if you want to see the real behavior of a structure uh, you better do the time history analysis. So during the time history, uh, I prepared this uh, uh, video, and this is also, uh, Gregor also showed this to you. As you see on the left uh, bottom corner, you see the uh, time history forcing function. And uh, as you see, the one of the hangers here uh, are lost. And uh, by the way, there are hangers in this side of the structure also, but we just, uh, you know, deactivate them just not to show them to just to see the uh, behavior of structure in that end. So if I play that you see when we ha when you see the when we have this uh, hanger loss and we have these additional forces here which apply dynamically structure uh, behaves pretty well by the way this force this displacement that you see here are pretty exaggerated uh, we just show them for the, uh, you know, that's just make it make more sense for uh, the user. So, um, uh, you see, uh, while we are losing one of the hangers, structure still behaves pretty well, and then the uh, force redistribution uh, is handled um, very well, and then structure is still, uh, you know, alive and is not uh, collapsed. Okay, uh, so... Uh, so that's uh, what I want to share with you today. So if I come up with the summary, uh, we saw that uh, different type of um, construction construction uh, of this type of bridge, network tied arches. We saw uh, the consideration of the, I mean, design consideration in two stages. One was the, during the construction stage, one was the final stage. And uh, we saw what uh, uh, tools do we need to uh, you know, consider those type of analysis or apply those type of analysis or study the structure during those type of, um, you know, stages. And uh, I showed you some functions of Midas Civil uh, which can help you uh, in that way. And then in the next session, um, we're going to show you how, you how you can model this type of bridges, network tight arches from scratch step by step and then all the consideration that we discussed now we're going to see them on the uh, structure and uh, as you may receive the invitations uh, we have upcoming technical seminars in the um, month of March and uh, please mark your calendar and join us in these sessions uh, these are also a series, and then after each session, we're going to have follow-up sessions, in-depth uh, discussion on the case studies, and also uh, having the training on the uh, modeling and then, you know, finite element modeling. Thank you so much for um, attending this session. This is my contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me. And... Uh, uh, we will share this uh, video, we will upload it on our website and we are going to share it with you guys. Thank you so much and have a great day.